Welcome to the first ever video combining chat GPT and Pictory and Ken Braverman. Because that's right. I've done a lot of driving over the last five years all the way across the country, visiting every continental U.S. state except for North Dakota. I've got to go there. So let's talk about the most beautiful places to visit. So, of course, traveling around, I developed my own opinions about the most beautiful places in the continental United States to visit. And I figured it would be a really interesting exercise to ask ChatGPT the same question. What are the five most beautiful places to live in the U.S.? And we'll see what kind of answers we have. Um, I was really surprised, actually, what came out, um, especially number one. So let's get into it. So number one ended up being Boulder, Colorado, which caused me to more than chuckle because that is probably, if it wasn't number one, it would have been at least number two on my list of cities that are the most beautiful and great places to live in the U.S. I lived there for a summer um, last year and I visited many times, uh, friends that live there. What you're seeing here is a, a video of downtown, I guess in the wintertime. Um, the, this town, it's a college town. It, it's just so gorgeous. The people are great. You've got fantastic food. You've got more than one option, in every type of ethnic food you could imagine. It's such a superb place to live. Not only the people, not only you know the geography, um, the outdoor activities. It's, it's really such a superb town, um, an intelligent town, a town that's dealing with growth in technology. I, it just, it, it, I can't believe this came out as number one because that's what I would have chosen. And I don't know how J ChatGPT knew that, but apparently they did. You're going to find yourself hiking or, in my instance, actually rollerblading down uh, the side of the river <laughs> that comes off the mountains right into downtown. Looks unbelievable. It basically looks exactly like this. So you can also raft down these rivers. Uh, you just, you cannot beat what Boulder has to offer. It's also sunny more than you would think there, even though it's obviously cold in the wintertime. It's just beautiful. You've got the university right there, CU Boulder, beautiful campus. Looks just like this. You know, it looks like it was built in like the 1800s. Um, but just clean, the paths are fantastic. It, it's a fantastic place to live. That's all I can say about Boulder. So let's go on to the next one. Oh, I've never been, I've never been there. I've never got on a plane. I certainly didn't drive. I've never been to Hawaii. So we're just going off of the video here. Yeah, of course it's gorgeous, but we're going to get to some Southern California cities in a minute and, uh, or at least one. And that's kind of where I can speak more knowledgeably, but I'm assuming that Honolulu is fantastic. Yep. That Hawaii is exactly as it appears here. I don't know, I'm too scared of water and sharks. I'm not going to be surfing. If I try to surf and fall into the water, I'm going to end up tearing a retina and going blind. So Honolulu and Hawaii, it's for those that really want the tropical paradise all the time and just completely be separated from the rest of the world. I understand it. I understand it, but it's not really for me. San Diego, another town I've lived at. Uh, back in 2005, six, seven, lived in Pacific Beach. I lived in La Jolla, lived in Claremont. Picture of the dog on my YouTube channel, that's where that dog lived, was in San Diego. Yeah, it's paradise. Anybody who's up north talks about San Diego, they discuss it as paradise. Uh, not just the weather, um, but the people too. It's, it's just a different lifestyle, and I highly recommend it. It certainly showed up on this list in the appropriate spot. Yeah, it pretty much looks like this, uh, 300 and, 399 days a year. I know that's more than there are in a general calendar year, but it's pretty much 72 degrees and gorgeous. With the exception of June, they have June gloom, where it could be a little cloudy. But overall, yeah, you're just looking at beautiful ocean views. You do have to keep an eye on your car. I did have my stereo stolen and my truck broken into multiple times if you, if you don't park it in a well-lit area where people will be watching. You are quite close to Mexico. And if you don't keep an eye on your motorcycle, it's, your motorcycle is going to end up in Tijuana. Uh, but other than that, it's a beautiful town. Like, I would highly recommend living there. 
and it has an interesting mixture of retirees. You know, everybody comes from around the country and they want to live in that Mediterranean type climate. You have that down in San Diego and it's worth it. So it's, it's just a beautiful place to live. And I, I can't argue with San Diego. Portland in the summertime. I mean, Portland in August, the colors just, it is such a calming surroundings. You just, what you're breathing in, I don't know what they got crazy mushrooms growing up there and foliage and like what a beautiful town and a beautiful area all the way up there between like Portland and Vancouver, Washington. Spent time up there years ago, uh, drove through that area all the way from Portland to Tacoma up, up along the Columbia River, I believe it is. What a gorgeous area in the summertime. I know it's kind of rainy and dismal for a lot of the year, but Portland is a beautiful town. And it, it's a growth town. I know there's a lot of young people. I know there's a lot of negative things you hear about Portland, um, but I haven't really seen it as much, even in downtown. You're going to see some resemblance to what you see in Boulder, Colorado a bit, but it's not as rocky. It's just, it's greener. It's greener for so much more of the year, uh, whereas Boulder's got more of like a, like a brownish tint to it sometimes, although also green in the summer times. But the lush greens that you'll see in Portland are really what's noticeable about that city. You do associate this town with these elevated highways that kind of come into town in the nestled area of downtown Portland. An area that, I, you know, every time I go to downtown Portland, I see something new and interesting. I've played poker in like these backroom speakeasies that are legal there, but it's just kind of a, a nestled small town and I haven't seen the negatives, even though I keep hearing about them. But whenever I go there, it's, it's really a good time and I don't feel unsafe and I just enjoy Portland. So this one surprised me, Charleston, South Carolina. Not Would not have picked this. I've only driven through Charleston. I haven't spent a lot of time there. I would have gone with something like Miami Beach. That, that's really what I would have gone with. But I feel like ChatGPT just had to throw something in there from the South. And so they went with Charleston, South Carolina. Amazing. After browsing all these photos and videos of Charleston, I'm now intrigued enough to go there. Because one thing we're going to learn about about navigating artificial intelligence is that it's going to teach us things that we never would have explored on our own. So I'd say one of the next stops, uh, which will probably happen over the next few months, will be Charleston, South Carolina, and we'll do uh, we'll be able to speak much more knowledgeably about that town and see if Chat GPT is right. So that's the first Ken versus AI Chat GPT pictory video. I give ChatGPT four out of five stars, and I really give it um, just a thumbs up on picking Boulder, Colorado as the number one city, because I agree. All right, good luck. Enjoy. Travel around the country. Travel around the world. We only have so much time on this earth, and if you don't get to see it, well, then you'll always wonder what it looked like. So enjoy. May all your trips be beautiful.